the amazing beauty discovery that creams your skin while you wash presents... The Eve Arden Show. Starring Eve Arden. Co-starring Alan Johnson. From Lieber House in New York City comes the greatest skin care discovery of our time. Its name is Dove. This amazing new bath and toilet bar is actually one quarter cleansing cream. Every bar of new Dove is one quarter cleansing cream. Ordinary soap dries your skin, but Dove creams your skin while you wash. Make this simple test. Wash one half of your face with soap, any soap. Rinse thoroughly and then notice how dry your skin feels after using soap. Now wash the other half of your face with amazing new Dove. No after feeling of dryness now. Your skin has a velvety, just creamed feeling. That's because Dove creams your skin while you wash. Lever Brothers guarantees that Dove is better for your skin than any soap or your money back. Dove creams your skin while you wash. Hello, Mr. Foster. This is Liza Hammond. Could we get a little more heat up here? What? No, we're not trying to grow orchids. <laughs> well, Jenny has a bad cold, and it's barely 60 degrees in here. Well, come up and check it for yourself. Goodbye. <coughs> Honestly, sometimes I think the heat in this building is controlled by the amount of trash we send down in the incinerator. <laughs> that must have been Mr. Foster. Liza, your bag is all packed. Well, thank you, Mother, but I'm not sure I'm going to Washington. Not go? You promised to take the twins over the weekend. Well, how can I take the twins with Jenny sick in bed? Well, maybe you can't take them. But there's no reason why you can't go, Liza. Good Hi, morning, George. Liza. Come in. Nora, how's my lovely client? And her incredibly handsome and youthful mother. <laughs> George, you're just terrible. <laughs> Isn't he terrible? <laughs> terrible. George, you're just terrible. <laughs> Gonna get you a cup of coffee and four or five donuts. <laughs> uh, what are you doing over here so early, terrible? Oh, pure sentiment. I just thought I'd like to drive my favorite client to the airport. Oh, how very sweet. I wouldn't want you to be late for your lecture. There's a very large fee involved, of which I get a richly deserved percentage. Mm -hmm. George, you're all heart. Well, this may make you skip a beat. I may not be going to Washington, D.C. Well, of course you're going to Washington, D.C. That's where the money is. You're giving a lecture there. Well, you may have to cancel it. Why? What's this all about? Jenny's in bed sick. Sick? What's the matter with her? She has a bad cold. She has oh. the sniffles. Oh, well, then there's nothing to worry about. Girls get over colds like that. Why is it that where children are concerned, every bachelor tries to be a sidewalk superintendent? Well, Liza, if she's really sick, you should stay home. If she's not, you should remember you've got a living to earn. She's sick. What about it, Nora? Oh, goodness, she has the sniffles. Dr. Shepard was here this morning and he assured us we had absolutely nothing to worry about. What does he know? Well, I mean, no doctor living is going to stop me from worrying about my own daughter if I want to. And obviously you want to. Now, Liza, you know perfectly well that I can take care of Jenny. The old saying is just as good today as it was a hundred years ago. Starve a cold and feed a fever. Mother, <laughs> that's feed a cold. Feed? I thought it was starve. <laughs> oh, that's why you're out of school so much. <laughs> No wonder I got so hungry. Well, there's no good coming to snap decisions. Is it all right if I go in and say hello to Jenny? Mm -hmm. I'll take her a donut. You'll do nothing of the kind. Feeding a cold does not include donuts. Come along, George. Help me give her an aspirin. All right. Oh, I'll get it. That's probably old Frosty Foster. <laughs> hello, Miss Hammond. I would have been up sooner, but I was busy putting my winter things in mothballs. Aren't you rushing the season a bit? Oh, a little, perhaps, but when Mr. Beekman moved out of apartment 5B, do you know what he left in the closet? Mrs. Beekman? <laughs> no, no. 
Twelve mothballs. A round dozen. Well, oh, that's a nice shape for mothballs. <laughs> and naturally, you couldn't let them go to waste. You are so right. <laughs> Actually, my nephew Melvin found them, so I let him keep two of them. And immediately he went out and got into a marble game, and in nothing flat beat some other boys out of 35 marbles. Good old Melvin. <laughs> Those boys over at the orphanage can't play worth a darn. <laughs> now, what was it you wanted to see me about again? About the heat in this apartment. Oh, yes, we'll fix that up right away. Oh, really? Yeah, to begin with, I suggest you open a few windows or uh, wear summer clothing as I am. It's, uh, it's stifling in here. <laughs> Mr. Foster, it is barely 60 degrees in this apartment. Look at the thermometer. 60 degrees? Oh, <laughs> it's a funny thing, but all the thermometers in this building show 60 degrees when it's actually 72. Must have been a bad batch. <laughs> Mr. Foster, I have a little girl sick in bed with a very bad cold, and I want that thermometer to actually read 72 degrees. Yeah, but, Miss Hammond, with the price of fuel, what or it is... Or do I call the city health department? How can I argue with the protective instincts of a mother? <laughs> now, I'll have that thermometer up to 72 before you can say Jack Robinson. Well, that's better. Now, I think... <laughs> Mr. Foster. Oh, <laughs> well, I better run. <laughs> Time is money, I always say. <laughs> he always does, too. <laughs> George, about that trip to Washington, I don't think I'm going. I don't think you should. After all, it'd hardly be safe to leave Jenny with Nora. Well, it'd be perfectly safe, but I just wouldn't feel right doing it, that's all. And you're not going to talk me into it. Not going to talk you into what? I'm not trying to talk you into anything. Why should you go? It's not as if you needed the money. No, of course not. Well, not much, anyway. <laughs> Good money. My allowance is due. Of course, I haven't any more bookings for you for the next month or so, but you'll get by. A month? Get by what? I hope you don't mean my allowance, because I need it. Mary, have I ever been late with your allowance? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> well, I won't be this time. Are you sure it's a month, George? Yeah, it'll be a month at least, but don't worry. If, if times get tough, you can always borrow from the Twins College Fund. I'd never do that, and you know it. And stop using your sneaky psychology on me. This is a very interesting conversation. I wish I knew what we were talking about. I would try to influence you for anything in the world. You're a free agent. Oh, thank you. Of course, I guess you've got all your taxes paid. Oops. Well, if the worst comes to the worst, you can always borrow on your car. As a free agent with taxes due, a balance owing on my car, two children and a mother to support, and a sentimental manager who wouldn't influence me for the world, I have decided to go to Washington. Well, that's the way I like to do business with my free agent. Uh, I'll go in and warm up my coffee while you get ready. Oh, I'm so glad we're going. I'll go get packed. Wait a minute, what do you mean we're going? Well, you promised to take us to Washington with you, didn't you? Well, that was before Jenny got sick. You wouldn't want to go without your sister, would you? Sure I would. Oh, Mary, you'd both be lonesome. Grandma will be with Jenny and I'll be with you. How could we be lonesome? Well, suppose you were sick and Jenny wanted to go. Would you like that? I wouldn't mind at all. We may be twins, but we're also individuals. She won't care. You can explain it to her. Oh, no, dear, I don't think so. We'd better wait till we can all go together as we plan. All right, Mother. I'll just stay home, hang around Jenny, catch her cold. It'll turn into triple pneumonia. They'll take me to the hospital. All right, Mary. They won't have any penicillin. All right, Mary. If I lie gasping for breath in an oxygen tent, they'll bring me the flowers you sent from Washington. For the best performance of the year. <laughs> Well, all right, I'll speak to Jenny, but I'm not looking forward to it. She's going to be upset enough when she knows I'm leaving. Liza, I don't know what to do with that girl. She keeps calling and calling and calling. Oh, the poor little thing. I'll go into her right now. No, she's not calling you. She's calling boys on the telephone. <laughs> I thought I'd call 
to tell you that I'm terribly sick with some terrible condition or other. The specialists don't seem to know what it is. But they're hoping they won't have to operate. I may be in bed for months. The dance is Tuesday. Oh, well, uh, they're flying in some new miracle drug from the Virginia Mayo Clinic. So I'll probably be able to make it. Jenny, you get back under those covers this minute. Mother! Oh, that was just one of the specialists who's very concerned about me. I'll be ready for my transfusion in a minute. I'll sterilize the instruments. <laughs> this patient is going to need oxygen. Excuse me, Mother, but the last part of that conversation was personal. Boy, it sure is fun having a cold. <coughs> Even though I am suffering a great deal. Jenny, would you mind if I went to Washington after all? Oh, no, of course not. Oh, I'm afraid you don't understand, Jenny. I'd be gone the entire weekend. Have a good time, Mommy. You don't have to pretend, dear. If you want me to change my plans, I will. Why should you? I'll be okay. Grandma will be here with me. Oh. Well, all can, right. Can I phone now? Oh, just one more thing. Mary wants to go, too. Without me? Mother, you're not going to take her, are you? Well, yes, I thought I might. And we can all go together some other time. That'll be very nice, Mother. If there is another time. <laughs> First, there'll be another time. I meant for me, Mother. But don't worry. I'll be all right. Ooh! Everything's spinning. <laughs> oh, your hand feels so cool. Yes, and so does your head. <laughs> yes. I must be getting a chill. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's warm enough in here? Well, Mr. Foster is seeing about the heat right now. Did Dr. Shepard tell you when the crisis would be? I think the crisis began when I mentioned Mary going to Washington. Uh, we'll be leaving in a little while, dear. I told Mother it would be all right. I just seemed to sense you wouldn't mind. Read any good palms lately? <laughs> Not as though you were really sick. It's just that my condition's critical. <laughs> Can I borrow your new mittens? I'm sorry. I'll need them for my chill blade. <laughs> now, Jenny, if you're going to be this difficult, we just won't plan on any weekends together at all. Mother! It's not that I'm trying to be difficult, Mother. It's just that everything's always been share and share alike. Share and share alike? You wouldn't even lend her your mittens. All right, you can use one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Big deal, left or right. You know, Mary, I think maybe Jenny has a point about sharing. Maybe you should stay home. I agree. Well, I don't. I think that would be very unfair. Well, this is the way sharing goes. You see, she's been playing her Pat Boone records all morning, so this afternoon you can play your records. But, Mother, all she wants to play are college football songs. Share and share alike. It's her turn. Well, okay. And then there's the telephone. What about the telephone? Well, you've been making calls all morning, so it's Mary's turn this afternoon. And I'll use it every minute. If I run out of friends, I'll call strangers. <laughs> Mother, I don't want to be selfish about this. Why don't you take Mary to Washington? Well, if you're sure you don't mind, Jenny. Not if I know that once in a while you'll both pause and think of the poor invalid lying helplessly in her bed of pain. Oh. Jenny, are you really in pain? Don't worry, I'll be all right. Oh, everything's spinning. Mother, she's acting funny. Well, you go right ahead and pack, dear. I saw this, an earlier performance of this, and believe me, the scene has a happy ending. You are looking at Dove, the amazing new beauty discovery. See, even the shape of this new bath and toilet bar is different, modern, 
curve to fit your hand. You use Dove like soap, but Dove is completely new, revolutionary, much better for your skin. Every bar of Dove is one quarter cleansing cream. Dove is one quarter cleansing cream. Soap dries your skin, but Dove creams your skin while you wash. Dove's rich lather cleans and creams your skin at the same time. Dove is two blessings in one. You can feel the cream in Dove. You can smell Dove's creamy fragrance. Dove leaves your face, your hands, all of you soft and smooth. Lever Brothers guarantees that Dove is better for your skin than any soap or your money back. Dove creams your skin while you wash. <laughs> You'd better unpack. Your things will get all wrinkled. I guess so. You know, Mary, now we're in one of the most interesting national capitals in the world. Washington has the... What's the matter? I was just thinking about Jenny. Oh, there's nothing to worry about, darling. I hope not. You know, right after my lecture, we're going on a sightseeing tour. Now, where would you like to go first? The Lincoln Memorial, the Library of Congress, the White House? No, the Washington Monument. It's always fascinated me. Oh, well, that'll please your history teacher. I didn't know you were so interested in the father of our country. It's not that. I'm interested in the monument because a man once caught a baseball thrown from the top of it. <laughs> that'll please your baseball coach. Mother, here's a letter. Who's it from? It looks like Jenny's handwriting. Says to whom it may concern. Well, we must be whom, so let's take a look. Huh? What does it say? Last will and testament? <laughs> no. Dear survivors, I, Jenny Hammond, being of sound mind and pain-racked body, do hereby bequeath to my mother, Liza Hammond, my autographed picture of Pat Boone. Oh, that's nice. To my grandmother, Nora Martin, I bequeath my rock and roll records. Oh, Grandma will be happy. To the best twin sister a girl ever had, Mary Hammond Esquire, I leave all my other worldly possessions. And I forgive her for having a good time in Washington without me, which I don't see how she can do. <laughs> Hail and farewell, signed the late Jenny Hammond. <laughs> oh, Jen. Mother, how can you laugh? Well, how can you not? Mary, you can't take this seriously. Jenny just wanted to be sure we wouldn't forget her. I'll never forget her as long as I live. I didn't mean that. Now, if there were the slightest reason to worry, darling, I wouldn't be here in Washington. But this morning you said you didn't want to leave her. Well, I was being over-emotional, just the way you are now. Look, darling, I'm a little tired, and I'd like to take a nap before my lecture. So why don't you go down into the lobby and buy some postcards, hmm? You can send one to Jenny. All right. I'll thank her for leaving me all her worldly possessions. Good. It isn't often that the person who writes a will gets to read the thank you notes. <laughs> <laughs> now, you run along, darling, and don't worry, because I'm not. Okay. See you later. Right. Mom's got at them. Oh, dear, dear. That 
to keep you warm. <laughs> I'm too numb to feel it. Maybe I wouldn't be so cold if I had something to eat, Grandma. Starve a cold and feed a fever. Starve a cold and feed a fever. Have a glass of water, dear. <laughs> Anyone for tennis? <laughs> yes, the pasta. Would you look at that thermometer? Goodness gracious. <laughs> we'll have to do something about that. <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. That's it. Yes, I think it is warmer out there. <laughs> <laughs> the pasta. If you don't get that temperature up to seventy-two, I'm going to call the city health department. Good. <laughs> Give my regards to my nephew, Melvin. He runs the city. He's a fine boy. Melvin's a typical example of how far a lad can go if he has a little gumption and two mothballs. <laughs> Can't you do something about the temperature? I'm very fond of this family, so I'll speak to my new furnace man. In the future, if you have any complaints, you can contact him direct. Oh, good, Mr. Foster. What's his name? Nanook of the North. <laughs> Nanook will have that thermometer down to 72 before you can say Jack Frost. <laughs> Grandma, please close the window. I'll try to, dear. I'll try. I'll try. I'll try. It is very warm and drowsy. Mother! Mother! Mother is here, darling. I will save you. Oh, my poor baby. Oh, my poor mother. Jiffy. Hello, Mr. Foster? You'd better get some heat up here immediately, or I'll call Mr. Beekman and have him take back his mothballs. <laughs> for you. Oh, how nice. What is it? <laughs> Your eviction notice. <laughs> Why are you evicting us? You know the rules. No pets. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Carl Foster. <laughs> Mary. You were moaning in your sleep. I came back to show you my postcard. Well, then you'd better show them to me on the plane, dear. I'm going to start packing. Packing? That's right. As soon as my lecture is over, we're going to get on a plane and go right back to Jenny. We are. My mother's intuition told me I shouldn't have left her in the first place. But I don't want to go back. Why not? We just got here. Besides, I met a Senate page boy in the lobby, and he's going to toss me a baseball from the top of the Washington Monument. Then he'd better toss it up, not down. We're going to be on a plane. Imperial. 
Now, Imperial combines the best of both table spreads. Yes, Imperial, the great new super spread, combines the best qualities of margarine, easy spreadability, consistent quality, and the best qualities of nature's own spread. Natural taste, natural aroma. Now you can enjoy the best of both, the best of the two table spreads, combined in one great new super spread, Imperial. I used to use two different kinds of spreads, one for the table, the other for the kitchen. But now I use Imperial exclusively because Imperial gives me the best of both. Yes, there's no other spread like Imperial because Imperial gives you the best of margarine and the best of nature's own spread combined in one new super spread. To protect Imperial's fine ingredients, always keep it refrigerated. Mary, you go in and tell Jenny we're home. I'm going to call Mr. Foster about the heat. Mother, it's 72 in here. It is? Why, it is. <laughs> well, let's go in and see Jenny. I can hardly wait to see her little face light up. You go ahead, Mother. I think I'll call Roger. Mary, your sister is lying in there sick. Okay. Hi. What are you doing here? Jenny, what are you doing up? You get right back in bed this minute, young lady. Grandma said I could get up. Floyd's coming over. Floyd is coming over? Mary, Lloyd, I thought you were in Washington. I wish we were. <laughs> Mother, this child should be in bed. Mary caught a cold? Oh, dear. Well, no wonder you came back. <laughs> Not Mary, Jenny. Oh, well, she's all right. Dr. Shepard said she's all over it. Mother, will you get angry if I make an honest observation? What is the observation? You and your mother's intuition. <laughs> I'd have done better with a Ouija board. Look at the flowers Mr. Howe sent me. Jenny, are you sure you've had enough to eat? Enough? Grandma's been stuffing me so you could put an apple in my mouth and serve me at a luau. <laughs> Good idea. <laughs> now, Mary, I want you to be sure to stay out of here while Floyd's over. This is my home, too, you know. I'll stay any place I like. That's gratitude for you, after I left you all my worldly possessions. <laughs> I've been thinking about that. After you gave away your rock and roll records and your autographed picture of Pat Boone, what's left? Just for that, you can't have any of the custard Grandma made for me. I can't. You have not! I can't! You have not! <laughs> back together again. Yes, isn't it sweet? <laughs> Excuse me, Mother, I'm going to call the drugstore. I want to order some vitamin pills, five yards of sterile gauze, and a pint of mercurochrome. What for? <laughs> the vitamins are for me. The E. Barden Show was brought to you by Dove, the amazing beauty discovery that creams your skin while you wash. Next week's sponsor will be Shulton, makers of Old Spice and other fine toiletries.